Now that we've got the administrative interface looking like we want, and we've got the data in the database, let's talk about how to display that data in the theme. Let me switch over to Aptana Studio, an open source text editor and development environment that is great for web development. Here I am in the root of the WordPress installation, and I've got the folder for the theme expanded. I'm using a custom page template for the home page, which I have called page-home.php. I'll open it up and scroll down, where you'll see a big blank space where those three featured items should go. Now Project Manager provides a number of custom shortcodes, which are pieces of text surrounded by brackets that WordPress knows to convert into something else. We can use the project shortcode here, specifying the project ID. For our features project, the ID is 1. And the template we want to use. We'll write a custom template called features in just a minute. And then WordPress will transform this shortcode into a list of all the features with the data displayed using the rules we set up in the template. Now shortcodes you type in the WordPress editor as part of the content for a page or a post will automatically get transformed. To include shortcodes directly in your theme files, though, you have to wrap them in a call to the WordPress function do shortcode. This function returns the string you pass in with any of the registered shortcodes transformed. We can then display the transform string on the page using the echo function in PHP. The last step now is to create this template called features. Looking at my theme folder, you can see the project manager folder we created earlier. I'll expand that, you can see there's the icon folder. Now the custom templates go here in this project manager folder. I'll create a PHP file with the same name as the template, in this case features.php. I've created a blank template file that I use as a base, which retrieves all the data for each item from the database and makes it available in a PHP array. Let me paste that blank template in here. As you can see, it has some comments to indicate how to use it. Here's where you put whatever PHP code you want to execute before the list of items. Then this block gets executed for each item, so this is where you'll reference the array with all that data in it. And here you put whatever PHP code you want to execute after the list of items. In this example, I want to create the list as an actual unordered list in HTML. I've written all the CSS already, so I won't go into that here, but I do want to show you where to put all the HTML. So before the list, I want to create um, my UL element. I need the first item in the list to be styled a little bit differently than the rest, which I can do by adding a class to it and then targeting that class with CSS. I'll create a PHP string here before I start looping through all the items. It will contain that extra bit of HTML I want to add to the first item. Then down here, as the last thing I'll do for each item, I'll go ahead and clear that variable. Let me add the HTML for the list item here that references that PHP string. The first time through, the li element will have that class equals first on it. But every time after that, the variable will be blank and the list items will not have that extra class. Next, I'll add the HTML for the thumbnail. It needs to be a link, so I'll start with an anchor element. My blank template loads the data into an array called MetaValues, using the labels for the fields I set up in Project Manager as the keys. This code will take the value found in the link field for each item and use it as the href for the anchor. Next, I'll add the HTML for the image. The value stored in the database for the image is just the file name, so I'll first need to add the URL to that folder. It's best to use the blog info function in WordPress to get the URL of the website and then add whatever needs to be added. And then use the value from the image field for each item. I'll add the rest of the HTML I need here for the image and for the closing link. Then I'll add the HTML for the heading. It again needs to be a link. In HTML4 and XHTML1, you cannot wrap an anchor tag around a block level element like in H2. That's why I have to repeat the anchor. In HTML5, though, interestingly enough, you will be able to do just that. So in this case, I would have been able to write just one anchor tag after opening the LI and then close it just before closing the LI. 
For the heading text, we'll use the name field that is built into Project Manager. You can access that a little differently, pointing to the name value in the data set object, like this. I'll close off the HTML for that line, and then start the HTML for the paragraph just below the heading. Once again, I have to start a new anchor tag, but then I'll output the value from the description field for each item. That's all the HTML I need for each featured item. And then I'll need to close the UL element for the list as a whole down here after the list. Now let's flip back over to the development site. Give the page a refresh. And now you'll see all three items displayed there. As I mentioned before, each element in that block is styled by CSS I had written previously, but that's a bit beyond the scope of this video. The whole block is an unordered list, and each item has an image thumbnail, an H2 element with the name, and a paragraph element with the description. And each piece of data is a link to the URL specified for that particular item.